Blessed be the name. Blessed be the name. Hey, blessings, blessings, blessings upon you and your house. This is the day the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Hello there. Hello there. Good morning. Uh, blessings upon you as well, Pastor Penky. Penky Chenario. The Christian Faith Ministries in India. India, we send a shout of blessings to you. Namaste. India, namaste, namaste, India. <laughs> namaste, India, namaste. We are sending a shout of blessings to you out there. India, namaste. Please share the broadcast and be a blessing to somebody. All right. Be a blessing to somebody. Share the broadcast and be a blessing. God is good. God is good. God is good. God is good and he's worthy to be praised. God is good and he is worthy to be praised. He is good. Oh, mighty, mighty, mighty God. God is good. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Pinky, scenario, blessings. Blessings, blessings upon you. We send a shout of blessings to you. Well, invite your friends and loved ones. Be a blessing to somebody, okay? Like it and share it so that others can benefit, all right? Be a blessing to somebody. Richard Atobi, Christian Faith Ministries in Ghana. All you Christian Faith Ministries, <laughs> India, Ghana, send a shout of blessings to all of you. Share the broadcast and be a blessing to somebody by sharing it and like it as well, all right? You have, we have something very, very important to share with you today that will be a blessing to you. And so be a blessing to somebody by sharing today's broadcast. Do that. Do that and be a blessing. Be a blessing to somebody. Well, let's get um, give ourselves a minute, about a minute, okay, just about a minute. And uh, whilst you share the broadcast, invite a friend and loved ones. All right, let's do that and um, get your notepads and pencils and just down some notes. This is very important, important message coming to you. This is the day the Lord has made and uh, we will continue to be rejoicing and be glad in it. We, we can stop. We, we just cannot stop. All right, rejoicing in this day. All right, we cannot stop. So share it, share it and be a blessing to somebody. All right, be a blessing to somebody as well. Um, let me acknowledge those of you, all of you on um, on the Twitter. Send a shout of blessings to you out there on the Twitter. Um, YouTube, sending a shout of blessings to you, those of you on the YouTube uh, Facebook as well. We send a shout of blessings to you. And across the 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 platforms where we simultaneously sing. All right. Please be a bro be a blessing to somebody by sharing it. God bless you for doing that. All right. Um, if somebody asks you whose authority are you operating under as a believer. I want us to look at some events of Jesus. All right, there are a couple of events, there are, or there are many events of Jesus, um, but I want us to look at one of them today. Very interesting event of Jesus, the Messiah, Jesus the Christ. 
Jesus in whom we have come to know. Um, in the book of Mark, in the book of Mark, we see uh, one of the events of Jesus that is very interesting and very powerful. And it has to do with authority. And so the question comes to whose authority are you operating under? Jesus operated under an authority. And you will find out as we read along that this authority of Jesus that he operated under, he gave you, his followers, that authority. The question is, are you operating under that authority or are you operating under something else? Are you operating under the authority of Jesus or are you are operating under something else? And we, we're going to find out. Jesus operated under authority. Jesus operated under authority. That authority was questioned. And even today, there are those, there are people who still question the authority of Jesus. Michael Lewis, send a shout of blessings to you and your house. Please share this broadcast to your platforms and you know, your your areas of groups and all that. Be a blessing and invite somebody. Whose authority are you operating under? Jesus operated under an authority. And we're going to see that in a minute. Jesus was operating under authority. That authority was questioned then and even now. That authority of Jesus is still being questioned today. That authority is a talk of a conference, a talk of a meeting. That authority of Jesus is still questioned today. Now, Jesus, in turn, gave you, the follower, that authority. And my question is, so therefore, are you operating under that authority Jesus gave you, or you what? Which authority are you operating under? Come with me to the book of Mark. Mark the 11th chapter. Mark the 11th chapter. Jesus, this story tells us that Jesus went to the temple or the place of worship and he saw what he did not expect to see. Jesus went to the temple the house of prayer, and he saw what he did not expect to see there because this is a house of prayer, but it was turned into something else. If you have your Bibles with you, with you, come with me to Mark the 11th chapter, and I will pick it up from the 15th verse. If you don't have your Bibles, please take your Take your notepads, notebooks, and write down this um, information. All right? Listen, information produces knowledge. If you want to have a knowledge about something, you need to have an information. And so information produces knowledge, and I want you to have information that will help you to increase and grow. Okay? Very, very important. And so um, check this today with me. Mark chapter 11. Mark chapter 11, and um, let's look at Mark chapter 11, and uh, look at the 15th verse. As Jesus entered into the temple or a place of prayer, he began to drive out those who were selling and they were buying and selling in that place. He overturned the money changers, their tables, and drove them out. He would not allow anyone to carry wires, any wires through the temple. He would not allow anyone to do that. Do you see anything like this in any of the places called a house of prayer? Where the, 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 you see people merchandising things. All right. Uh, it's not the same. It, it's it's no difference. It's no difference in going to a set or a house of prayer or a house of worship 
and you see people selling something, either a bottle of oil, a bottle of water, or some exchange of something. Here is a situation where Jesus came and saw that people were exchanging or selling merchandising things instead of the house of God being a house of prayer. Jesus, therefore, did not allow that because he did not like what he saw. So he began to drive them away. Jesus began to drive them away. Over 10 tables in which they were selling things on, money changes, people were exchanging money. You know, people were selling other things and all that. Then Jesus said something very interesting here, and I want you to look at the 17 verse. It says, Is it not written, is it not written, quote, My house shall be called a house of prayer of all nations. Is it not written that my house shall be called a house of prayer for all nations, but you have made it, you have made a house of prayer into a den of thieves. Think about that. You have made a house of prayer. This is what Jesus is saying. Based on what he saw there, that you have made the house of prayer into a house, into a den of thieves. Well, the people who were selling there and exchanging money and, and, and all that, were they thieves? <laughs> Ask yourself that question. Think about that. Were they people, were they thieves who were doing that? But just what Jesus says, but you have made it a den of thieves. Now watch this very carefully. The scribes and the priests, the chief priests, when they heard that, when they heard what Jesus had, has done, they sought to destroy him. When the chief priest, get, get that picture here. When the chief priests and the scribes heard what Jesus has done in the house of prayer, they sought to kill Jesus. They sought to destroy him. How dare you come and mess up our business? How dare you come and overturn the money changers? Their tables. How dare you, Jesus? What gives you that authority for you to do that? What gives you, Jesus, that authority that you can come and destroy what we are doing? What gives you that authority? What made you do that? Jesus is saying that you have turned the house of prayer into a den of thieves. Beloved, this is very, very interesting. Very interesting situation I want you to follow into. Now, the reason is, watch this, the scribes and the chief priests, when they heard of it, they sought how they might destroy Jesus. For they feared him, they feared him based on what he did. Because all the people were astonished at his teaching. The people were astonished. They were marveled. Because you see. When people get used to something. And all of a sudden. There is an, a revolutionary. You know. Atmosphere created. You know. Those in control. Those behind. That you know. Um, regular way of doing things hear about it or see it they become fearful because they are thinking number one something has come to overthrow what we are used to our status quo is about to be destroyed and this was the situation with the scribes and the high priest that they they were 
concern about what Jesus was doing had come to do. Because the people, everybody was astonished at the teachings that Jesus was teaching. And um, what happened is that these people planned to destroy Jesus. Look, jump with me quickly to 27 verse of Mark, the 11th chapter. Then they came again to Jerusalem, and as he was walking in the temple, the chief priests, watch this again, the chief priests and the scribes and the elders came to him. Now the chief priests, the elders and the scribes came to hear Jesus. And then they asked him this question. By what authority are you doing this? By what authority? Jesus came to the temple. And so many changes. People were merchandising. Today it's a different, you know, way of merchandising, but it's still going on. Selling oil, a bottle of oil, a bottle of water. How many people can give, 20, you know, this amount of money? That kind of stuff. This is all, listen, it's a, it's a modern day of the same thing they were doing there. Jesus came and overthrew and destroyed all that. A house of prayer is turned into a den of thieves. Don't forget that. A house of prayer is turned to a den of thieves. This is what Jesus is saying. And so the scribes, the high priest, or the chief priest, and the elders came to Jesus, and this is what they asked him. By what authority are you doing this? And who gave you this authority to do these things? Who gave you, number one, by, by what authority are you doing this? And who is, just in case you don't understand the question, Jesus, who gave you this authority to do what you are doing or what you have done? To come and destroy what was going on in the house of prayer. Don't you know that this is how we make money? We sell, we allow people to sell things so that we take money. This is how we make money in the church. Jesus, you are destroying the church business by throwing away all that is going on. This merchandising is how we make the money. So Jesus, two questions. The first one, by what authority are you doing this? By what authority? If you look at the, 20, the 28 verse of Mark the 11 chapter, you see that Mark 11, 28. And they ask him, by what authority are you doing this? And by whose, and who gave you this authority to do these things? Who gave you this authority? Now watch the, watch the event here. Verse 29. Jesus answered them and said this. I will also ask you a question. Typical Jew. <laughs> Not answering straight question, but answer a question with the question. Boy, I love my people. Mm -hmm. I will also ask you a question. Then, answer me, he says. And when you answer me, I will also give you my answer. So Jesus asks them, I will also ask you one question. One, one, just one question. You've asked me two questions, but I will ask you one. Because two questions, your number one question was, by what authority am I doing this? And number two, 
Who gave me the authority to do that? But I'm going to ask you just one question. And that question is, he says, will also ask you one question, then answer me. I will, I will, then I will tell you by what authority I do these things. And this is the question. Verse 30. The baptism of John was that was it from heaven or from men answer me the baptism of john was it from heaven or from men the baptism of john answer me jesus answer me jesus is asking this question to describe to the to the chief priests and the elders i'm ans asking you one question you you have two questions. But what of watch this carefully. Please, I want you to watch this very care, very, very, very carefully. All right, let me straighten this thing up a bit. Okay, here we go. Uh <laughs> watch this. Okay, I'm trying to straighten this now. Okay, we're good. Now, watch this. Jesus then asks them one question. The baptism of John. Huh? The baptism of John. Was it from heaven or from men? Answer me, he says. If you can answer that question, I will also give you an answer. To your question as to whose authority and who gave me that authority to do what I have done. And they reason among themselves, look at verse 31, they reason among themselves, you know why? And this is what they said. If we say, if we answer him and say from heaven, then he will say, why then did you not believe him? Because obviously you did not believe John. Huh? Verse 32. But if we say from men, then, then they, watch this. But if we say from men, they fear the people for all counted John to have been a prophet indeed. The people counted John to be a prophet. But the scribes, eh, the, the, the chief priests and the elders didn't believe them. They did not believe. So Jesus asked that question. Because all the people counted John to be a prophet indeed. Verse 33. So they answered and said to Jesus, we don't know. Liars. Liars. They don't know, they say. We don't know. We don't know what happened. John's baptism is from heaven or from men. We don't know. But he is doing it. Liars. They don't know, they said. The liars say they don't know. They don't know. They don't know. So they answered Jesus and said, We don't know. And Jesus then said to them, Well, neither will I tell you by what authority do I do this. If you don't know, if you don't know that the baptism of John was either from heaven or from men, if you don't know, then I will not also tell you by whose authority. I'm doing this. You know why? Because they knew. But they don't want to receive that. John was baptizing. Watch this now. John was baptizing. Okay. John was baptizing. And Jesus came to be baptized. When Jesus came to be baptized. The Bible says that. The heavens declare 
The, 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 the spirit of the Lord came upon he, Jesus, and therefore the heavens declared that behold, this is my beloved son in whom I wear pleased. The scripture tells us that from then on, Jesus was led by the spirit of God. Jesus was led by the spirit. Jesus was given the authority. Jesus was given the power. Jesus was given the mandate to do all that he was doing. And these people knew that there was something different about that. There was something different about Jesus. Nobody could do what he does. Nicodemus, one of the of the of the of the of the uh, the learners, people came and says, Jesus, we know, we know, we know that no one can do this unless that person was sent from on high. No one can do this. There's no dispute about that. But yet, even today, there is still dispute as to who Jesus was. The authority. Who gave you that authority? Who gave you that power? Who gave you this mandate for you to do what you are doing? Jesus says, if you are not going to answer me, answer my question as to what do you think about the baptism of Jesus, of John? If you're not going to answer that, then neither will I give you the answer of which authority and who gave me the authority to do this? Because you see, they know. They know that the authority Jesus have was authority from above. They know that. But Jesus has come to do a way to destroy their deceptive, carnival way of putting people in bondage in the name of chief priest, in the name of scribes, in the name of elders, not letting the people be free, putting people under bondage through that of the law. You see, one time Jesus said to them, you are more concerned about tithe and you have left heavier matters somewhere and be more concerned about tithe. We still have that today. They are more concerned about tithe and offering. But heavier matters, love, justice, how to deal with your neighbor and things like that. Jesus spoke more of the kingdom. And these people knew that the kind of teachings and the message that Jesus was bringing forth to the people was to revolutionize the mindset of the people, to bring the people to the place of them knowing that, listen, God has set you free. You are free indeed. You do not need to buy no oil or buy anything for you to apply for nothing for God to do anything. But you see, the more the more these scribes and uh, elders and the chief priests put these people in a state of bondage, the more they benefit and the more the people who are given lose. We still have that today. But if you are a believer, if you are a believer, the question is, whose authority? If you are a true believer, if you are a follower of Christ, whose authority are you operating? Jesus gave that authority before he even died and when he died and resurrected. Look at what he told the disciples in Matthew, the 28th chapter, the 18th verse. Matthew chapter 28, verse 18. Come there. Listen to what Jesus said. Jesus came and spoke to them. And this is what he said. He says, all authority has been given to me, just in case you don't know where he got it from, from heaven 
both in heaven and on earth. Both in heaven and on earth. Now you need to understand something that it was it was unusual kind of teachings that Jesus was teaching the people. Unusual, not the the, the normal teachings that it has to do with you got to bring something to get something. That the norm that that wasn't the normal the, the normal teachings. That it has to be, if you do this, then God will do that. Jesus was teaching a different message. And that people were marveled. And no one, no one, no one, no one could question that. Except those that he was destroying their business. No one, except the scribes, the elders, the chief priest. You see, they came and asked Jesus, whose authority, who gave you this authority to do this? Who gave you this power to do this? Who mandated you to do this? But Jesus had that authority. From the day he was baptized. This authority Jesus says. Said to the disciples with him earlier in the book of Acts. He says you will receive power. When this, this same personality come upon you. The spirit that came upon me when I was baptized. In the Jordan River by John. The spirit of God. The Holy Spirit. The spirit divine. Some call it Holy Ghost. When he comes upon you, you will receive power. Power, power. <laughs> I like the sound of it. Power. You're going to receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. Because you see why? When he came upon me, I received power. I met the devil eyeball to eyeball, shoulder to shoulder, and I defeated him because of the power. Because of the of, of of that authority given to me. Are you getting the picture now? You can do that too. Jesus says, the things that I'm doing, you can do that even more. When the Holy Spirit comes upon you, you will not be afraid. You will receive power. See, until then, you are powerless. But you will receive power to tread upon scorpions and serpents. Stop standing on, on their necks and ain't nobody, nothing going to by any means hurt you. Mm -hmm. You receive power. You're going to receive authority. Jesus says, all. Please underline that. All. 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 All authority has been given to me. Both in heaven and on earth. Just in case, you know, you are not sure. And this power, I am giving it to you also. Watch this verse 19. He says, therefore, go and make disciples. I'm sending you with that authority. Believer, are you listening to me? Have you received that power? Have you received your authority to win? Have you received your authority to win? Or you are, you are copying what you think that is. You have no authority. But you see, it's a matter of time though. That the people of God will wise up. It's a matter of time. And when that day comes and when that time comes, they're going to leave you. Unless you come up with another scheme. What authority are you operating under? Are you winning by the authority of the Holy Spirit? Or you are winning by authority of something else? Whose authority? What authority? Who has authorized you to, be well, to do what you are doing? That's a question they ask Jesus. Look at 2 Peter. Come with me to 2 Peter. Let me finish with this. 
and let you go. Look at Second Peter. Second Peter, Peter chapter chapter one, verse three. Look at Second Peter chapter one, the third verse. As his divine power has given to us all things that pertains to life and godliness through the knowledge of him. Through the knowledge of him who called us by glory and by virtue. How do you get knowledge? By information. Information produces knowledge. If you don't have the right information, you, you have a wrong knowledge. Because you can have a wrong knowledge and the right knowledge. The right knowledge in this scripture today that I'm giving you is that the authority of Jesus was by the Holy Spirit. Was by the Holy Spirit. The authority that these people were questioning Jesus' authority of why he was driving out money changers and people doing all kind of business in the house of prayer was by the authority of the Holy Spirit. You can walk into a place of, of worship and with that authority of God, you can tell whether that place is being functioning by the, by the auspices of the Holy Spirit or by not, or by something else. You can tell. And if you have that authority as a believer, beloved, that authority was given to you for you to also go out and make disciples. Tell the whole world about Jesus. If you look at the 19th verse of Matthew, it says, Jesus says, go and make disciples of all the nations of the world. All the nations. Baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. And verse 20, he says, Teach them, teach them. This is what this is what scares the religious leaders of the days of Jesus. Jesus was teaching them for them to have an understanding that will cause them not to be destroyed. When you bring the people to a place of understanding, they cannot be destroyed. Jesus says, teach them to observe all the things that I've commanded you. And lo, don't forget that I am with you always. Even to the end of the age. End of age. Amen. Amen. So Jesus was telling these people and telling us today, I have given you that authority. Use that authority to tell the world about Jesus. Use the authority Jesus is giving to you. The authority that is given to us as believers is for us to tell others about him. Today, it's my prayer that you are beginning to renew your mind about telling people about Jesus. Renew your mind. Tell the people about Jesus. Now, if you have not received Jesus, therefore, of have not received him in your heart as your Lord and Savior. I want to give you an opportunity to do that. To do that. You have the opportunity to do that. How do you do that? You believe him in your heart and you make that confession with your mouth. That God raised him from the dead, you'll be saved. Let's do that. Let's pray that prayer right now. Sincerely from your heart. I don't see your heart by God says. Say, Lord Jesus, I thank you for this teaching and message. Forgive me of my sins. I am a sinner. Come into my heart. Be the Lord and Savior of my life. From this very day forward, I believe you in my heart. Right now, and I confess you with my mouth that God raised you from the dead. You rose from the dead and you told us that all authority is given to you in heaven and on earth. And then you have given us the authority to tell the world about you. Lord Jesus, I thank you now. Baptize me now with the spirit of God. Your spirit, that authority. Amen. Amen. That's it. Amen. That's it. Listen, 
I said that said it sounds simple because it's simple. The sincerity of, of what you say from your heart is what matters. I want to encourage you to pick up your Bible and start reading. If you do not have a Bible, you can't find one or can you cannot afford one. Reach out to us, we send you a Bible. Free of charge. Yes, we send you a Bible. All right. How do you get to us? Go to our website. The address is www. Patrick Quino, Q U A I N O O Global Ministries org, and make your request there. I also want to encourage you to subscribe to our YouTube platform so you can get this and other messages that will increase you. All right. I thank you for making time with me today. I hope you've learned something and I hope to come your way same time again very soon. Until then, you don't have no trouble. All you need is your faith in God. And in all thy getting, get understanding. I'll see you soon. God bless you.